Hello folks, and welcome back to Podium Quick Tips. Now, we've just released SU Podium version 2.5.1, which includes the brand new panorama feature. So we thought this would be a great time to record a short little introduction that kind of walks you through the process of creating and using Podium panoramas. And if you haven't seen the feature yet, what it does is it renders a 360 degree panoramic image that you can open in a browser or send to a client or embed on a web page and look around like you're standing in the room. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. I've switched over to SketchUp and opened up a model by Nat Ellis. This is the same model that you guys were seeing in the example panorama just a few seconds ago. Now, creating panoramas is really a two-step process. The first thing we need to do is render an equirectangular image which is basically a flattened representation of the scene that we're in and then we'll use the podium image editor to convert that to a 360 degree spherical panorama that we could open in a web browser so once your scene is set up it's really a pretty straightforward process to render a panorama image but there are a few things I want to talk about uh, the first thing I want to go over is camera position Obviously, for a 360 degree panoramic render, we're trying to capture as much of the room as possible. So we don't want to stick our camera in a corner of the room at a skewed angle. We want to move the camera as close to the center of the room as possible and use a neutral camera angle. Now, the new version of Podium, I'm just going to tilt the camera down and aim it at the floor here. The new version of Podium includes a little utility in the Extensions V2 Plus Tools menu called Reset Tilt. If you select Reset Tilt, it's just going to return the camera to zero degrees. And we've found that this helps a lot. It helps to eliminate strange perspective issues that we were having early on in the testing of the panorama feature. So before you render your panorama, extensions, V2+, plus, tools, reset tilt. So once you've set your camera position, really the only thing left to do is come up into the podium options menu and under image size, select panorama. Now, when you're in panorama mode, the width and height are automatically going to go into a 2 to 1 aspect ratio. So if I change the width to 2000 pixels, the height automatically goes to 1,000. If I go to 4,000, height goes to 2,000. Uh, the reason we've done this is just because after a lot of testing, 2 to 1 was giving us the least amount of perspective distortion in the final panoramic image. So for now, panoramas are fixed at 2 to 1. As for resolution, you obviously want to render as large as possible, but this is going to be limited by your own time constraints. For now, we recommend you aim for at least a width of 2,000 pixels. Anything less than that, and you're probably going to start noticing some pixelation on full screen panoramas on larger screens. Um, you might be able to get away with less, but try to shoot for a width of 2,000 pixels. And after that, I can hit OK, and we are ready to render. So I'll render this image, and then we'll switch over to Podium Image Editor. Okay, so the render has finished, and what you see here is our final result. This is the equirectangular image, and this is basically just a flattened representation of the scene from the perspective of the camera. Now, in order to add interactivity to this, we need to go into the Podium Image Editor and convert it to a spherical panorama VR. So, let's go ahead and switch back to SketchUp under Extensions, SE Podium version 2.5 Plus, Tools, and open the Image Editor. So we'll open PIE, and then we need to open our image. So File, Open, and I'll just find mine real quick, right here, and load it up. Now, Conversion is basically a one-step process, but if you want to do any sort of post-processing, you need to do that before you convert it to a panorama. So 
let's just go ahead and just for the sake of example we'll do a slight contrast boost um, now in order for any changes you make in PIE to be reflected in the panorama you need to save the image first the reason for that is that any changes you make in here are saved in system memory until you actually save the file so go ahead and click apply go to file save and I'm just gonna overwrite the original and then we're all set to convert so there are two ways to do this there's an icon here for panorama or you can go to file panorama it doesn't matter which way you choose they both do the same thing so let's click that icon a little dialogue is gonna come up and it's gonna tell you that the panorama HTML file is going to be saved to the same folder as the original image. That's extremely important. The panorama won't work unless it's in the same folder as the image. So these two files need to stay together. Go ahead and click create panorama. It's going to convert it and automatically open it. And there you go. We have our panorama. It's really as simple as that. I'll just show you the folder that we're in real quick. As you can see, you have the original equirectangular image, and then it's also created an HTML file, which can be opened in a browser. Oops. So I'll just open this in Firefox, and we're right back to where we were a second ago. So that's the basic panorama process. As you can see, it's really a pretty easy to use feature once you have the workflow down, and the result is very cool. So we're gonna go ahead and end the video here. We'll put information about sharing panoramas with clients and embedding on web pages down beneath the video on the panorama page. Um, so I hope you guys were able to follow along and have a lot of fun playing with the new feature. Thank you so much.